Well, uh, hi everybody. It's it's pretty impressive to be here, talking in English here in Lille. I'm from Lille. I, I work close to here, um, and um, um, I would start to to, um, to please uh, the organizer of this event. This is very cool to have this here in in Lille, and uh, I would also thanks uh, Inea Technology, which is uh, uh, supporting me for almost one year now, uh, to develop that uh, open source project, Alessandra and to provide an uh, enterprise-grade feature for that. And this is a project I've started uh, uh, two years ago. And uh, here is uh, the agenda of my presentation. I will uh, explain why we, why uh, Alessandra and how uh, it, has, um, it has been developed. And then uh, I will talk about um, how it works uh, uh, internally, and then how it can be used with uh, Docker and Apache Spark and uh, I will finish with uh, a small demo with uh, uh, a small application developed for, for the uh, developed for the, the conference. So um, you you probably have uh, um, already choose some uh, uh, NoSQL databases to store all your data, and um, it's a pretty hard question um, for many reasons for performances or our cross data center application. And um, um, what's very important is to choose a, a database uh, matching your needs. And um, um, finally, um, um, the way the database uh, is built um, mainly impacts the um, availability or consistency of your application. Um, you've probably heard about the uh, CAP theorem, uh, consistency, availability, and partition tolerant. It's a theorem that says that you, you cannot uh, satisfy more than two uh, of the third uh, guarantee at the same time, and you have to make a choice. Uh, and the choice is basically you have to choose between consistency or availability. And the design of your uh, NoSQL solution uh, uh, is. Uh, closely uh, linked to uh, these uh, constraints. So if you choose uh, a master-slave uh, NoSQL distributed uh, database, uh, it, it would say that you are um, focused on consistency, but you will probably lose some of availability in a case of a network uh, failure. But if you choose a, a multi-master uh, database, you will have um, uh, more availability and you will have uh, tunable consistency. The first multi-master database uh, on the market was uh, Amazon uh, DynamoDB. Um, it's uh, pretty popular now. And um, in 2008, uh, Facebook also uh, developed uh, Apache Cassandra, which is now an open source project. Um, uh, um, since uh, 2008, I think. And uh, there's also some other uh, Clue database uh, uh, offering a multi-master uh, configuration. But um, uh, uh, apart from this Clue database uh, from Google, Amazon, and uh, Microsoft, uh, Apache Cassandra remains probably the, uh, the, the main solution to uh, to set up a multi-master database replicating on many uh, data centers. And this is something you, you should keep in mind because with uh, cloud provider vendors, you, you're probably locked in uh, from a vendor. So uh, Apache Cassandra is very popular because it, this is the, the open source to, uh, solution to do that. So, so um, I'm, I, I'm a fan of Apache Cassandra and and the, the issue with Apache Cassandra is that you, you, don't have any, uh, um, you don't have very powerful search features. And, and I was working for a bank and they wanted replication from uh, many data centers and, and they wanted to use Elasticsearch, but they, they didn't add uh, a replication for Elasticsearch between data centers. So I started to, to hack Elasticsearch to, to see how it could be replicated between data centers. And um, I finished by setting up the Elasticsearch code inside the Apache Cassandra. So my, my project at the beginning was to, uh, to hack Elasticsearch, to put it inside the uh, Cassandra GVM, 
and to merge the properties of the, the two products. So with the Lath Android, you, you, you still have the Elasticsearch API, uh, all search feature and aggregation and so on. And, and, uh, and you keep uh, Cassandra uh, features. Um, um, you have cross data center replication, the ability to repair your data, and, um, and, and you also have uh, uh, a linear scalability. That means that you can add nodes and nodes to, to go uh, to, to, to scale out your cluster. So those two products, uh, Apache Cassandra and, uh, and um, Elasticsearch, are very uh, different. Cassandra stores uh, uh, data as rows, and this is extremely efficient to write uh, quickly your data. And there's, of course, many um, interesting features to, to do replication and to be always up. Um, at the opposite, Elasticsearch has a, a, a columnar storage. This is much more, uh, um, um, it, it, it's, it comes with a cost to, to write uh, in a column, uh, as a column store, but, um, but it's much more efficient to do search and aggregation. And this storage um, allows to do a real-time analytic uh, dashboard here with Kibena. And uh, what's, that's pretty cool with Alessandro because you are, you are able to choose uh, which storage you want um, depending on your use case. So you can, you can uh, uh, store your data in Cassandra and then later or at, from the, the ground start, and then you can um, uh, build elastic search indices from your Cassandra data. So the way Cassandra scale um, um, allow to start from one node and then to add uh, uh, two more nodes and, and test uh, your redundancy. And then you can scale out by adding more nodes. And if your application uh, um, has a great success, you can replicate your data in another data center. And the replication is continuous. That means that you can uh, update some data in both data centers. And it, it, it's going to be replicated in, in milliseconds, depending on your network latencies. And, and then you can scale out by adding more and more nodes. Apple is using uh, is the biggest uh, Cassandra user. They, they have built a big cluster with uh, more than 1,000 uh, servers. And, um, and two years ago, they had uh, more than uh, 100,000 uh, servers running Cassandra into production. So it's, a, it's a really, 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 really big. And uh, um, uh, by, by, using, uh, by integrating Elasticsearch inside uh, Cassandra, you can now replicate your uh, uh, data between two data centers, uh, and then each data center is also an Elasticsearch cluster. So you, you will be able to plug uh, your search application, or Kibana, or any, any tool that works with uh, Elasticsearch. Uh, you will, will be able to use it on the two data centers or more. And uh, if you have a network glitch, uh, meaning that you, you, are, you have lost some data, the, the uh, Cassandra has many mechanisms that, that um, for example, intend of that, that keep the data uh, apart from the, the node. And when the, the remote data center is up or the server that is uh, replaced, this, this bunch of data will be resent to the uh, destination node and the data will be uh, re uh, repaired. So um, there's also uh, many advantages to run Elasandro uh, over Elasticsearch if you are focused on availability. Elasticsearch uh, um, is uh, relying on, um, on a master node to uh, uh, drive uh, configuration change. And uh, in Alessandra, there is no master node. Every node are running the same code and, and acting as the same. And uh, if you need to change the configuration, you, you can ask on any node to, to change your configuration. So there's, there's no more master node in Alessandra. The second point is that in Elasticsearch, when you do write, it goes on primary shards. Primary shards are dedicated to, to get uh, um, 
write operation and then uh, rep primary shard are replicated to, uh, to replicate to read-only operations. So when you lose a primary shard, you can't, you, you can't write on, the, on that primary uh, during uh, January uh, uh, 90 seconds. And, and during that time, you can't write because the, the cluster has to, to move the role of a replica to a, to a primary shard. In Alessandra, every node can take writes, so you don't have any uh, uh, write single point of failure uh, in Alessandra because you can write on all nodes. And, and third, um, when you had uh, more node to an Elasticsearch cluster, um, if you have more nodes that you have configured uh, shards, will be, um, you will need to um, reshard your cluster. That means reread all your data to rebuild indices. And, and this is a quite expensive operation. And when your cluster is already um, overloaded, um, re-indexing all your data, it's, it's very expensive. It, uh, it's, it's, it's quite stressful to do that when your cluster is um, already overloaded. Well, so uh, with Alessandra, you, you can also mix various tools coming from the Elasticsearch stack and uh, tools working with Cassandra. So we, you will be able to use the Logstash uh, to ingest data in your Cassandra cluster and Kibana to visualize those data. You will be able to use uh, Apache Spark uh, to uh, compute the data or use Pre2DB. Pre2DB is a distributed SQL engine developed by Facebook. Uh, it can execute distributed uh, SQL queries on various sources of data, including uh, MongoDB, uh, MySQL, Hadoop, uh, and of course, uh, including Cassandra. So for example, here, here is a, a, a dashboard with uh, firewall and proxy logs collected in Alessandra, and, and uh, this is running from one year now, it, it does a job. But there's various use cases with Alessandra. You can do uh, IoT. Uh, for example, on the left, you've got a, a project of a French company deploying uh, PV solar plants in Japan uh, on small lakes uh, because the ground is, is too expensive in Japan. So uh, we collect all those data in Alessandra, and we, we, we've built a dashboard to monitor the production of, of the PV uh, solar plant. There's also a, a startup in the US that collects uh, health uh, data from various hospitals to do uh, uh, analytics. Uh, and uh, you've got a Russian uh, company that do uh, um, electronic uh, or that do blockchain monitoring for, for some. Uh, uh, for bitcoins and many uh, electronic money. How it works? Um, you've got a, a, a perfect matching between uh, Elasticsearch concept and the Cassandra ones. So for example, uh, uh, a cl an Elasticsearch cluster is a, data, is a, um, a Cassandra uh, a virtual data center, and a, a, an Elasticsearch document is a row uh, in a table, uh, in, a, in a Cassandra table. The code of Elasticsearch is, is embedded in the Cassandra code. So uh, when you start a node, it's both a Cassandra node and Elasticsearch node. Each time you write uh, in, in, a, in a table, it will be indexed in, in Elasticsearch. And you can also ingest your data with the Elasticsearch API. So for example, when you write with the Elasticsearch API, it goes uh, through the Elasticsearch API. It's, uh, uh, transform to uh, an insert uh, in, into Cassandra. Then the data is replicated to uh, other nodes. And locally on each node, the data is indexed in, uh, in, in Elasticsearch shards. So here, you've got two replicate of the data on, on, on nodes three and, and two and three. So when then you, you search for a, a specific data, you request through the Elasticsearch API, and then uh, Elasticsearch layer uh, distribute your search over all the, th the, the nodes of your data center. And then when the matching document are found, um, we are requesting Cassandra to, uh, uh, to get the uh, columns that you want to have in the, the final results. So um, Elasandra is uh, still working with uh, Spark. Spark is a... Uh, 
is the uh, uh, unified analytics engine. And uh, the, the main advantage is that you can run uh, uh, um, machine learning uh, jobs uh, with Spark and visualize uh, your data uh, directly from your Cassandra cluster by indexing those data in, in Elasticsearch. So I've done a benchmark uh, using uh, 500 million rows. Um, and the, the job was to uh, execute a query like uh, uh, select something uh, group by uh, something. And the job was uh, uh, more than three minutes long with uh, Spark and Cassandra. Uh, the same job using uh, Spark and Elasticsearch was about one minute, uh, because Elasticsearch was properly filtering data before um, uh, moving the data from the data storage to the Spark memory. And if you, if you ex execute the same query, uh, um, inside Alessandra, you can request Elasticsearch to do the aggregation, and the job is reduced to 10 seconds for that aggregation. So uh, you, you can win a lot in performances by using properly uh, the Elasticsearch uh, from the Cassandra driver. Well, um, one of the main advantages is that Alessandra allows replication between uh, multiple uh, provide, uh, cloud providers. Here is uh, um, uh, between uh, Azure and OVH. So we, we deploy a stack with uh, Docker for applications, uh, including Kibana uh, inside a Docker container. And then uh, Alessandra uh, is a data layer. It's elastic by adding some nodes. And it's also distributed between many data centers. Just a focus on traffic. Many of you are already using traffic, for example, here. No. It's a Docker Ware reverse proxy. And uh, it's very cool because uh, you can deploy your application. It's automatically aware about a uh, uh, deployed node. And uh, Alessandra can ensure the data layer with elasticity. And you can deploy it on multiple data centers. So, we, we've made a demo with a small application. Uh, it comes from the, the, a data set of uh, Open Food Fact project. It's an open, uh, open source project where, where people can uh, take a picture and uh, information about products in, in, in store. And uh, we've, we've set up um, um, uh, this infrastructure. So this is three virtual machines uh, running on Azure, on Azure and, th and three running on OVH. The, Elastic search, uh, the Alessandra cluster is replicated between those two data centers. And uh, on the stack, we also have uh, a Docker Swarm cluster to locate our, our, our containers. And traffic is directing input uh, traffic to the right containers that uh, request the, uh, on the data layer uh, the Alessandra node. So uh, all of these were deployed automatically uh, with a tool we've developed called uh, StrapCloud. It, uh, it creates all the virtual machine with Terraform. It pushes a configuration with Ansible. And, and it set up all the, the, the Alessandra configuration, the Swarm cluster, and the Spark cluster. And then uh, we, we've deployed our uh, small application. It's uh, based on a Python framework uh, named Flask. Uh, here, here you've got a, a piece of code uh, running um, uh, an elastic search query to search for a product. And you can see that the first function search is based uh, on the elastic search API. And the second one, uh, get product, it's, such a, it's just a call to uh, Cassandra through the Cassandra uh, object mapper. Uh, and then with uh, uh, four lines of code, you can expose uh, your data uh, through a REST API. So, I hope I've got a network connection here. Uh, it closed my, my window, so, sorry. Uh, it, it's going to be too long to start all that now. Um, well, so this is, uh, 
this is a kind of dashboard you can also have uh, uh, with uh, the, the data. Uh, so to set up that configuration, we took the CSV file from the open food fact. We've put that CSV into the Alessandra cluster. We've built the Elasticsearch in this. And then we were able to do a dashboard with Kibana. The dashboard is running from the two data center, is available from the two data center. And if you put some new data in the data center, it will be replicated to the other one. But we also ran uh, a Spark uh, machine learning uh, classification. And for example, this is the result of our classification on products uh, displayed with the uh, Kibana. So the bubble graph is displaying how the the machine learning has, has clustered uh, all the data. And the, the main criteria was uh, fat, proteins, and salt and sugar uh, contained in all those uh, products. So uh, if you're interested in that, uh, there's many links here to uh, the, the Alessandra uh, open source project on GitHub. And the open food fact uh, is also available on GitHub. You, you can uh, see how uh, this code is, is, uh, is built. And there's also many links to, uh, to run all the, the stack uh, doc documentation about the, the Cassandra driver and the Elasticsearch driver. Um, These this drivers are available in many languages. So you can choose any languages to develop your own app. You can deploy it on Docker, and you can get all your data from Elasandra with the two API. Thanks, uh, thanks a lot for listening to me. Uh, um, I would be happy to answer any questions. Thank you, Vincent. Hi. Hi. Thank you for this talk. Uh, how many people worked on Elasandra? You mean are using Elasandra? How many people worked on developing Elasandra? Uh, uh, I'm the main contributor, and uh, we are two full time on the project. And there's uh, occasional contributors coming from uh, everywhere. Since two years. Since two years, yeah. Okay. So you you talked to. Elasticsearch team, you, how did you pros proceed? Uh, in fact, uh, it's a fork of Elasticsearch. So uh, I, I, every six months, I, I do an upgrade from Elasticsearch. The project start with the Elasticsearch version 1.7, then 2.4, then 5.5, and then right now we are in 6.2.3. And in fact, in Alessandra, it's an Elasticsearch fork, and we only change about 2, 000, uh, 200 classes among the 2,000 uh, classes of Elasticsearch. So, so Alessandra is, is not a lot of code. It's about uh, 10,000 10, lines of code. Uh, but the two projects, uh, Apache Cassandra and Elasticsearch, it's more than 1 million, uh, 1 million line of codes. So, in terms of development, the Alessandra project is not very huge, but uh, it's, it's, it's built on the top of two open source projects that are very, very... Uh, uh, there's a lot of code for those two products, of yeah. course. It's impressive. It's, I will look at it. Okay, thanks. Thank you. The, 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 uh, what we try to do is to change at the minimum the Elasticsearch code to do the integration. For example, uh, uh, we, 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 so in some cases, we just, just send uh, uh, a word private to public to expose a new API from uh, another class. But, but we've, we've tried to, to change the minimum of code. And, uh, and of course, we can upgrade separately uh, uh, Cassandra new version and Elasticsearch. In fact, there's a, a, a Cassandra bunch of code and Elasticsearch. And we can move uh, the, the two parts separately. Okay, thank you. Thank you. <laughs>